Wondering what's next in your business or personal life? Welcome to Success to Significance, Life After Breaking Through Glass Ceilings, a podcast dedicated to helping you with all of life's challenges, discoveries, and opportunities. Whether you're seeking a new career, retirement, or simply wanting to make an impact in your community or the world, join Jen Duplessis and her guests as they explore how to start, what to do when you're in the thick of a change or growth, and how to leave a mark in this world after breaking through your next achievement. You are moments away from the aha you've been seeking. Hey everyone, and welcome back to this episode. I am so excited uh, to have this guest with us today, William Moore, who goes by Will, so we'll be able to call him Will. But I'm so excited to have him because we were first introduced by a, a colleague of ours and we probably spent an hour and a half on the phone and said, gosh, we should have recorded our conversation on the phone because we had so much fun that hopefully we'll have more fun left here today as we're talking. So, Will, I want to welcome you to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It is an absolute pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Well, absolutely. I'm excited. So let me give a little bit of background about you um, so that we everybody knows who we're talking to. Um, you're an honors graduate from Rollins College, um, a dynamic entrepreneur, speaker, life coach, and happiness expert. His number one mission in life is to gamify the process of personal wellness so that people become addicted to becoming the happiest and best version of themselves in turn paying it forward to help it help the world, which is exactly what this podcast is all about. Um, so I'm not going to go into other details. You can read about his bio in the uh, show notes, but um, you know, one of the things that we were talking about that, that really we want to hone in on today, there's a couple things. One is habits right? Creating really good, strong habits. And the other is the gamification of the habits, um, especially because we're in the COVID cocoon right now. Hmm. Right. COVID and this is a good that. time to make some changes in your life. And we're coming up to the end of the new the year, right? And so now everyone's excited about New Year's resolutions, <laughs> which don't ever go very far, right? So let's talk about that a little bit. But before um, before we kind of head into that, I just wanted some backstory about you and how you got to this point, you know, because you had a very, very successful career. And now there's this impact that you want to provide to the world as a result of sort of what you went through. So would you share with us the success that you had? And so uh, sure. So <laughs> thank you for that intro. Uh, success to me, it, just even hearing that word, it's funny. I when I hear you were successful, um, I still I, I've trained myself so much to dissociate the word success with finances and career, which um, I know is is what ninety nine point nine percent of people still do. Um, and and it is indeed when you if you look at kind of the, the way I look through the the lens of the world is there's these five cores areas that we all need to be successful in and career and finance is one of them, but yeah. it's just one part of it. So yes, mm -hmm. on a, I, I was able to fortunately exit our business last year um, that we were growing over the last 10 to 12 years, um, a restaurant delivery service, similar to a Grubhub or an Uber Eats or a DoorDash as most, most people are familiar with. Um, we actually started way before all those guys. You did. I saw uh, the video. Yeah. And, and so we were fortunate to exit and, you know, you build a business and I think most people, um, you know, hope to one day be able to exit. So we were very fortunate and thankful to be able to do that. But my journey started, you know, I mean, it, it was definitely a rough ride growing up. Um, my parents got divorced at an early age. I grew up in, was born in Hawaii, moved to Honolulu, Hawaii, which sounds very luxurious on the surface, but we were basically living in a van uh, my parents divorced early. My mom was an alcoholic. She she comes from a family where uh, of alcoholism as well. My grandfather was actually a general in World War II, wow, a three star general, and he passed on the the rage and the alcohol gene, I guess, so to speak, to my mom. And so by the time you know I got to college, and we moved to D.C. when I was seven, Bethesda, Maryland, and I just never f really feel like I fell in. I was very insecure. I was your typical victim convinced life was out to get me. There was nothing I could do about it. My brain is broken, just like a lot of 
people tend to do, uh, especially kids, you know, your hormones are raging and you're like, why, why do I, why is my brain work this way? And I get to college and I was just basically like, you know what, this is a fresh start. I'm going to, I'm going to really just get it going and, and, and start fresh here because I'd had a miserable experience up until then. And I kind of put all my hopes and dreams on like getting into this fraternity, which to a lot of people sounds silly because a lot of people wouldn't go to college. And so I don't know, I feel like it's like a, uh, a high, uh, one of these privilege problems to have. But at the time in my world, in my universe, that was like the most important thing. And I just wanted yeah. to be accepted somewhere. And like everybody in my hall got into a fraternity. I did not. And knowing what I know about humans and, and universal principles and not focusing on yourself and putting the focus on the other and making them feel special. It's no surprise that I didn't because I was so insecure and it was all about me. But at the time it was devastating and I just was kind of at my rock bottom and I was, I was suicidal. Um, not just for that, but that was kind of like the, 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 the needle that broke the haystack, so to speak, yeah. the cherry on top. And then I was serendipitously just very fortunate to have one of my favorite professors introduce me to a book called how to win friends and influence people. And I really admired this guy and he just was like the kind of guy I wanted to grow up to be. He was just like a cool dude but yet he was really smart and he could relate to people both teachers and students and so I went immediately after class to the library I devoured it and I was like holy schmoly <laughs> I have discovered that there's another way to look at life yeah. and so I kind of just became this insatiable self-help beast just getting my hands on as many self-help materials books seminars um, that I could get my hands on and using myself as a human science experiment, so to speak, where I would kind of test different things, what worked, what didn't, and just really just taking crazy notes. I've always been a crazy note taker, writing things down um, of what worked, what didn't, and just it just kept growing and growing and growing. And slowly but surely, I did start to kind of get out of that hole and change my mindset from your typical victim to, to more of an owner mindset. And just, you know, over the years, just kept reading, kept growing, kept trying things, kept learning what I consider, you know, these universal truths, or I call truths, or I call total truths, which to me are things that have been around since the beginning of time. They're going to be around till the end, or until we yeah. destroy ourselves, right? You can hang your hat on them, you know, things right. like, like I said, from, from Dale Carnegie's book, how to win friends and influence people, just make the other person feel special. That's really all the book was about. Take the focus off yourself, make the other person feel special and just kind of using those to my benefit. And then as I started to evolve and get better and, you know, my finances and my career and my relationships and my physical health, all these things started to improve at some point. And I had, I had my first child, he's four and a half now, why? And I said, I need to turn this into something more than just something for me. So when I sold my business, it was the perfect segue into making this my life's mission. I love that. I love you know, and you and I have talked about this before, but, um, you know, my father was an alcoholic. So I think that, that, uh, I want to ask you about this too, but, but, uh, you know, you, you are a people pleaser, you become a people pleaser, but because it's so focused on, um, how do I want to say this? Because, because I know what you're saying. You're saying, you know, I was focused. It was all about me. And that's why I didn't get in the, in the, uh, you know, for our, um, Fraternity. <laughs> that was a sorority and a, and a fraternity at the same time in the fraternity. I didn't get in it because I was all focused about me. I wasn't focused on other people, but the, the bottom line is you were focused on other people, what they thought of you, what they judged of you, because you came from this background, you kind of covet it. You don't want to right. see it. That's right. I mean, that's how I was, you know, I was like, Ooh, I don't want anybody to see this other side. So I'm going to really the focus right. on them, but technically you're focusing on yourself because you're, hi point. you're hiding from it, you know? And I think, you know, the challenge of coming from or going from victim to victor, you know, it's multiple, multiple ceilings. So the question I have for you is that, you know, one of the th things that I learned from Al-Anon um, is that we, can't, we do walk around with an alcoholism of sorts. And we have, you know, these, these uh, weaknesses that we will lean to in a bad situation, right? So it may not be the actual drink, but there is some type of alcoholism. Do you feel that you had something at some point in time uh, prior to you, you know, becoming a self-help junkie, which is not your alcoholism? <laughs> it may be, it may be a new direction, but do right. you feel like you had something that, that you had, you know, growing up or until you realized that? 
had something in terms of some type form of alcoholism like mine for example is accumulation uh, buying right like so if i get really stressed i go shopping Got and that's it. not yeah. a woman thing that's an alcohol thing mm -hmm. um it's a really good question um nobody's ever asked me that uh yeah i mean i would say that I mean, I, I would really throw myself into kind of what was in front of me. So I actually, so school, I became addicted to, uh, like, I actually did really well in school. Yeah. And um, when I got to college and stuff, because it was like, that wasn't working. The social part wasn't working over there. And, you know, this isn't working over here. And my right. parents, my mom's screaming at me and my yeah. dad's off. Um, I didn't mention Drinking. this earlier, but he was, he, he went over abroad overseas for many years. So it was, and my sister was actually like one of the cool kids and she got in with this older crowd and I'm her younger brother. So that wasn't happening. <laughs> so I just threw myself into kind of whatever was in front of me. And yeah. so studying was one sports was one that I got into kind of later, unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, I was a late bloomer as well. So I didn't yeah. even go through puberty until like my, between my sophomore and junior year of, of high school, which yeah. is very late for guys usually do it, you know, freshman year, girls even earlier than that. Right. So right, I'm like right. squeaky voice will just, and I grew like seven <laughs> inches over the course of one summer. Yeah. My limbs literally grew, were, grew so fast and I was so uncoordinated that I would reach for things and just knock them over because and I was like, expecting them have to be inches <laughs> closer to me, my depth perception. And so, and that, you know, and so that, that, that was not an easy transition, but once I did find my body, you know, it actually yeah. was more in college. I started getting more into sports. I got bigger, stronger and, and found my, you know, my, my coordination yeah. and whatnot, but studying was definitely a big, big, yeah. One. It became your addiction, like, right? It became your addiction. In my addiction. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think this is why, um, both of us are really into habits, breaking the chain, right? Like breaking that chain and creating good habits. So let's talk about that because, you know, I know that, you know, you talk a lot about momentum. You talk a lot about habits. Um, let's talk, share with us about your perspective on habits and what you are teaching and talking about nowadays regarding habits, especially as we're sitting in COVID. I mean, this is when you should create a habit. Don't create the bad one, <laughs> create the good ones, but go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Well, so this is, I mean, this is such a great opportunity right now because right. Like habits are one of those things. They don't care if they're good or bad, helping or hurting us. They're going to do their thing. Right. And you, you develop a lot of them come from earlier. We have uh, our role models, our parents, then it's school, then it's peers, then it's media news. These days you're getting it from every direction. Um, you know, from yeah. your TV, from your phone, from your, and it's very easy to get caught up in and, and societal wise, like we have, it's a broke, it's broken in a lot of ways and that we're focusing on the wrong things. Yeah. And if you were an alien to come down on the planet earth and kind of just check out our media and stuff, you would totally think that we were all about looks and money. Right. Yeah. And, and glorification of busyness. Yeah. Who's yeah. more busy. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, to me, these are just all things that are, are very easy to kind of fall victim, victim to, and that all of a sudden you're doing, you're, you're taking certain actions, you're doing certain habits that are actually making you less happy, not, not building your, you know, momentum, so to speak. And you get to young adulthood and then it's like, whoa, like I've got this habit, this habit, this habit, this habit, but, mo and many of us, like, there's some obvious ones that people realize like, oh, I know I should work out more, or I know I should eat better. Right. But then there's so many that kind of are off the radar of people, such as like, you know, my negative thinking or, 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 you know, just focusing on or, or not, you know, something as silly as looking people in the eye when I'm speaking to them. You know, if you didn't learn that from your parents and you didn't get that somewhere along the line, how many people have you met when you, when you go to meet them? Yeah. You're, you're going to shake their hand and they kind of look away or they, right, I mean, kind of ducking around to get in front of them. Yeah. <laughs> It's like <laughs> immediately first impressions are huge. That's another yeah. universal principle. It just, it's yeah. for better or for worse. It's what it is. And people are going to make an impression of you. And if you don't look somebody in the eye, when you meet, that's going to really hurt your chances of building some sort of relationship or, or alliance, you know, whatever it is. And we need other human beings in our lives for these. Yeah, so that's just yeah. kind of one example. 
Yeah. And you know, I mean, so how, what's your perspective on what's happening with children? Cause you know, you said you have kids and you know, I have grandkids and they're not getting that social interaction. They are, I thank God. I mean, really thank God. My kids were here this weekend for Thanksgiving and my grandkids and um, they get along. There wasn't a lot of fighting, right? They're six, four, six, four, and two. <laughs> I'm trying to remember their ages. They're six, four and two right now. And I was surprised that there wasn't a lot of fighting. And I even said to my son, you know, I'm surprised that, that they're not just at each other constantly, constantly. And he said, yeah, we are too. Um, because they need that. Um, just like we do as adults, we need it as well. So are you, um, what's your perspective on how this is going to affect the next generation? Cause I don't think we're going to see the impact until later. Yeah. I mean, in terms of, because we're, we're spending less time with other people with COVID and all that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, I actually think we'll be okay if you develop the right types of habits. Like it's going to be very easy to just go into your own world. Like people's homes are becoming more and more their castles where it's yeah. like, they've got everything they need. They got high speed internet. They got 8 billion cha right. channels to choose from and, and service providers for TV. And, and, you know, you can get anything you want within two right. hours delivered to you. Um, but if, if you develop the right habits, like just even this, right. So we're not in person, yeah. right. but this is fulfilling my relationship core and that you're a like-minded person. We're having a nice mm -hmm. conversation. I'm feeling your energy. You're feeling my energy. Like it, it counts, right. It's, yeah. it's maybe not quite as good as in person, but to me, we're very fortunate to be living in an era where technology has gotten to this point when, when this kind of shift is happening. And I do think it's a big shift that's happening regardless yeah. of if we got a, a vaccine that 100% of people got in a week from now, I think that that the pendulum has already started to shift and then it was long overdue in terms of things like offices, employing yeah. all these people. And for instance, I live in Chicago, I live in a suburb. It's about a half an hour commute in each way. And so even though I work from home, so fortunately I've been spared that, the majority of my friends and people that I know they spend at least an hour, sometimes up to two hours a day commuting. Yeah. You know, they get to the office, there's the, the, the checking in, there's the water cooler banter, there's the, you know, and when at the end of the day, you know, it's an eight to 10 hour day and maybe there's three, hours four hours more. tops of productivity. Yeah. Right. And so from yeah. both ends, from both the employer's end where he's saying, well, wait a minute, or she, I, I'm paying all this money for all this office space, this insurance, this all when they could be at home now they're seeing for the first time, like, wait, they're at home and they're getting just as much done, if not more so, and just as productive. And in a lot of cases, yeah. not everything, not everywhere. But yeah. I think that from what I've heard and what I've seen, people are like, well, I want to spend the, the second half of my day playing golf. And yeah. I know that I have this much amount of work to do. I'm going to be super productive, get it done. And so then they can go do that other thing <laughs> that they want. And so it works on both ends, both the employer yeah. and the employee. I know that yeah. people that have, have, entered into this sort of and not having to commute they're like i'm never going back i don't care what my job tries to tell right, me. So it's right, be interesting. right yeah and that's a lot of people who are listening to this podcast too is you know this is this is sort of that shift it's everything from success to significance right making an impact and and really making that shift um you know subtitle of this podcast is life after breaking through glass ceilings right and those glass ceilings aren't necessarily financial when i say success because it's just the success that everyone has in the glass ceilings. Like you were contemplating suicide and that's a glass ceiling that you broke through, you know, or a ceiling that you broke through, you know, to, to move your, your life forward. Yeah. And I, and I think there's a, I'm laughing about it. So if you're, you know, if you're listening, it's one thing, but if you're watching us on YouTube, it's, it's um, I'm laughing about it because it's everything that I've been teaching for years and years is you know, what if you could go on vacation every single day of your life? What if you could have so much intention? And this is where the habits come in. So much intention when you go to work that you get in, you do what you're supposed to do. You don't eat, you don't do activities for the sake of that, doing activities, which for me is like eating soup with a fork, right? And you're not, you're exhausted when you get home, but you think you've worked all day, right. but you don't, you're not fulfilled in any yep. way, shape or form, right? At, at all. And this has been sort of my story for many, many years is, is to get in, do the work, be intentional, be laser focused, know what you want, create the habits to be that laser focus, and then go play every day, you know, work on purpose to go play with passion. 
So now people are experiencing, if they're doing the right things, they're finally experiencing that and now realizing, gosh, you know, it's not what I want to do. So, so let's talk about these habits again. So we know we have bad habits and we know we have good habits. You know, what is the way that someone could get started? Do they just sit down and say, okay, what are all the habits I have and kind of arrow them into the good and bad column? Or, you know, do we have to assess that so that we can create triggers to change the mindset when it comes up? I mean, I have a bad habit and I, and I just went through some, it's funny. We were talking about Jack Canfield, right? His beautiful wife, Crystal. I mean, not Jack Canfield, um, Mark Victor Hansen, his beautiful wife, Crystal. You know, I went through one of her meditations on eliminating a trigger of mine, right? To eliminate a trigger. Um, and, and it worked. And so now when that trigger comes up, I'm like, no, no, go away. Bad trigger, (laughs) ugly (laughs) gorilla, go away. Right. Go away. And, um, you know, and it's created a better habit, another shift for me in a habit. And it's only in, it's only a degree today, but down the road, that's a huge change, you know, and you can change that one degree. So share with us, how, how would we get started turning the bad habits into good habits? And then we'll go to how do we work on those habits to make sure that they're good and strong and can move us forward? Well, you've set me up perfectly to, yeah, this is exactly what I do. And this is, so one of my frustrations that I had over the years, as I said, I was this crazy insatiable self-help guy. And I, you know, I'd read the same thing 12 different times from 12 different people. And I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And then by the time I read that 12 times and I've tried it myself, I'm like, okay, everybody's saying the same thing. It's basically just coming down to this. And then at, at a certain point, um, I realized that it, right. It habits, habits is really what it all comes down to. So I, I created what I call my equation of life, which I've kind of been living off of since college, but I didn't realize it. Yeah. And it took me, you know, it only took me 25 years to sort of come up with it, but basically <laughs> right. it's your belief system plus your repeated actions plus time equals who you will become. Yep, okay. And so yeah. basically, right. It's, what are the thoughts going through your head? Are you a victim? Are you an owner? What is your mindset? Are you, you know, you know, are you confident? Do you have a good outlook on life? Are you sure that, you know, life's out to get you? There's nothing you can do about it. And hopefully you'll hit the lottery one day and you'll all be saved. And then, you know, based on these, these thoughts, you're going to take certain actions and yes, they should be specific and intentional. I'll tell you about that in a second. And so you take these actions and then basically the more you take them, the more they turn into what you hope will become habits, right? And habits, like I was saying earlier, they don't care if they're good or bad, helping or hurting us. They're going to do their thing over time. It's a step-by-step, one-day-at-a-time process. You can't build a habit in a night. However, some habits you can build in a week. Some might take, you know, two months. Yes. It's not a simple <laughs> formula, but at the end of the day, there's going to be yes. some front-loaded work if you want to get rid of, if there's a bad habit, I call them failure habits that you want to replace with a success habit. There's going to be some work involved. And then the more you do it, then the more it becomes automatic. Your brain's constantly trying to conserve energy. So what happens is once that habit's formed, your brain's like, all right, I got that one. We don't need to worry about it. Right? Yeah. And, and it doesn't take any time. It doesn't take any, right? Driving home from work. Brushing your, your teeth. just happens flossing. to go that way. Yeah. That's exactly right. You people, br- you brush your teeth. It's just auto, it's just something you do. Right. And so that's the point is like, that's, that's where you want to get to where, and then time does its thing. And then you, Mm -hmm. it all compounds. Right. So it's like, you may be 18 years old and you're able to eat 10 cheesesteaks in a sitting and wake up feeling great, but you do that for 30 years yeah, and you don't exercise. Let's see how that plays Mm -hmm. out. Right. So that's why the equation of life, belief system, actions, time, who you will become. And so that all plays yeah. out and, and it's going to be, and it's going to work itself out. And so these habits that you have, if they're, if they're failure habits, and yes, it's all about shining a spotlight on your life. That's the first thing I help people do. I say, okay, look, let's just start. And you got to start simple and small. If you try to hit them all at once, you're going to get overwhelmed. You're going to quit because that's just, that's just how our minds work. We that's like over- new year's resolutions, right? I'm going right. to work out. I'm going to eat. I'm going to stop drinking. I'm going to spend more time with my friends, my family. I'm going to get up right. early, blah, blah, blah. And nothing works. Yeah. Right. You're, you're best is to pick one. And even with one, if you don't do it consistently, you got to fake it till you make it. I call it yeah. like, you got to just keep like set an alarm, get some sort of system going um, if you look at my, my desk right now, I have my top five habits I'm working on. It's part of my routine every single yeah. morning. A routine is super important as well in the morning, especially 
to have a, a success routine where it's like, these are the things that are going to build my momentum and supercharge me for the rest of the day. And so I have my top five or I look at them. I remind myself every morning, these are the ones that are important to me that I want to do. And so you've got to have that in your life somehow where you're, 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 you're aware. And I've gotten to a point where I can see five, but you want to start with just one and you say, okay, what are the top, let's go top three things that I think are hurting me right now. And if you yeah. aren't quite sure, I have this exercise that I, I do with people where you flash forward to the end of your life. And it sounds a little bit morbid, but stick with me. It's called the funeral <laughs> exercise. Yeah. And basically what you do is you, you pretend like your eulogy is being given at your funeral and, what, funeral and what people are saying at you, how many people are at your funeral, right? Yeah. Is it one? Yeah. Is it your mom? Uh, you know, or, or, or is it like a ton of people and they're saying all these nice things and I even break it down into the core. So your cores are your mindset your relationships, your career and finances, your physical health and your emotional health and giving back. And so within each of those, what are the top five things you'd like somebody to say about you? And then you can literally just take that list and you can build your habits off of that. You say, okay, yeah. well, if this is where I want to end up and this is the habit I have, then I need to change that habit because it ain't going to, I ain't on, I'm not using that equation of life to help me. It's currently hurting me. Yeah. How much does, how much does core values, you know, people's, the principles that they have play in um, assessing what core habits, you know, it's one thing to say, I'm going to go to my funeral story and, you know, I hope that I was a good person. I hope that I gave back, et cetera. But that, you know, that exercise is, um, is it in alignment with your core? Because I, I sometimes think that if that string isn't attached to it, regardless of all the paths you have to take to get there, the ups and downs and rounds and figuring out different ways, that string is still there because it's a core that you want, not what society gives you that says you need to be a nice person. You need to be a kind person. You need to be a, th a philanthropist, but it has to come from our core in order That's to, exactly right. to drive, right? So how much, how much do you work with people on their core values? Well, and that's why I like the funeral exercise versus because th that sort of forces you if you don't know what your core values are. Yeah. Um, and I don't actually get into like, I don't actually say, okay, let's look at your core values. To me, I do have an exercise where I say, let's, let's make a list of all your strengths and yeah. let's make a list of all your passions. And to me, that kind of, kind of solves core thing. value. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Where it's like, these are the things that are really important to me and that I love, um, yeah. And, and then these are the things that I'm good at. And, and I always tell people when it comes to your career and you're fine, you always, you always want to try to combine those two. Yeah. Um, I say, try like you, you need to, if you want to live your best yeah. life, you, you have to, Right. Uh, I mean, you, you right. can do it the other way. Like you said, you can eat a fork, you can eat your soup with a fork um, and you may get really good at it, but it's never going to quite feel like you're doing something and you're making yeah. progress. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so, so someone kind of gets this alignment going right through the funeral exercise or, you know, the strengths and the passions and kind of making those come together, AKA core values in, in a sense. Yep. And so they've got that going on now. Um, so what about the assessment of the good habits to make sure the good habits don't stop because the bad habits that you're trying so hard to get to make better, start overriding them. And then the good habits actually slide into bad habits again. So that's where this whole gamification stuff comes in. And, and really the, the whole, the whole idea of all this is you need to, if you want to be, live your happiest, healthiest, bestest, awesomest life, you need to maintain balance and continually build momentum in each of your course. And so let's say that you're just, for example, to answer your question, mm -hmm. Let's say you, I have this little assessment on my website and you can kind of find out really quickly where you stand in your cores on a scale of one to five. And you'll quickly see where, which core you're weakest in, which you're strongest in. And you always want to start on your weakest one, right? So let's say you've just completely gotten out of the habit of working out and your career and finances has been taking up all your time. And, you know, your relationships have been suffering a bit, you know, giving back isn't even on your radar, you know, yeah. your emotional health, you're very, you're stressed. You're constantly running around. Like Losing sleep, head. yada, yada. Yeah. Right. So, but, but you're really putting in a lot of hours, but so that's, that's great. And again, it goes back to societal, societally would say, oh, well, if you're he successful. sells his company for $10 million, he's successful, but no, not at, not at the expense of all these other things. So yeah. you, you kind of need to sort of say, okay, how can I maintain the balance and continually build? And so what you want to do, and part of what I help people with is to, 
to sort of, I have this, this current strategy that I help them with, which my system that's evolving into an app and a game yeah. where you're know, this I'm rocket so ship and you have these cores are the cylinders of your engine and each core represents a different one. And the idea is you want to maintain balance and continually build momentum. And as you do so, you fly off and you reach the next planet and then the next galaxy and universe and you're you're meeting aliens along the way you're dodging through <laughs> asteroid fields and there's all these little challenges that are coming which all all kind of tie into this but you're doing it very slowly and you're and and the ones like to answer your original question maybe kind of along with your answer but if if some of them start to fall off the wayside so like let's say all right now all of a sudden you're working on your physical health because that was your weakest but then your career in finance starts to sh- to, to mm-hmm. suffer. Yeah. Well, if you have a system in place, that's kind of monitoring them all and you're become, and you're aware of where you stand in each, it's a lot easier to sort of say, okay, I've gone a little too far over this way. I need to, to figure out a yeah, schedule, a routine that gets me more into balance. Yeah. I, I, you know, and it's, it's funny and, and I know you're using the word balance and we talked about this when we were talking before as well as, you know, I'm not a fan of the word balance. Um, you know, just because I feel like it's, 50 50 everywhere you're sort of a little here and a little there and everything um but what i like about the gamification is it's the trigger that that increases the awareness when you don't know that and i always use the story that you know if you're standing on two boats at the same time you're exhausted because you're trying to balance the boats no boat gets attention so let's call it your family and your business or your family and your health or whatever no one's getting any attention because you're constantly managing the balance of it, right? And you're exhausted from doing it. What you're saying is when you're doing something like that, the gamification piece of this is the trigger that says, whoa, 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 I'm in a balancing situation that isn't working for me right now. I need to make some decisions on how I want to, to that's move right. forward. That's, that's well said. And, and you're absolutely right. And, and it's impossible. Let me, let me preface everything with what I'm saying. I'm glad you brought that up because it's impossible to, to, I call it firing on all cylinders, which is where you want to get to, which yeah. is that you're kind of, you're killing it. You got at least a four out of five in all five of your areas. Right. Yeah. And, and you've got goals and you're, you're every day working, moving towards them uh, for each of your areas. And, but you know, it's impossible to be completely balanced on all. What's going to happen is you're going to find your, your career in finances. You might go through a month, two, three, where it's like that does take more of your focus because that's, that's what's required. Like you're trying to start a new business. Yeah. You're launching you step it up a little bit. Yeah. Maybe some yeah. of your other course suffer a little. That's okay. As long as in the greater scheme of things, you, you know, they're still there and you're not completely yeah. letting them dissipate, yeah. but you're kind of keeping an eye on them and maybe you're cutting back a little bit, but then once you know, at, at a certain point, then you kind of want to write the ship. ship again. Yeah. And if you don't, then what happens is that that's why it's so easy to just all of a sudden you're career finance. Well, yeah, I'll just work an extra hour, two hours. Five. And then before you know it, it's like 12 hours a day in your career and finances and you've neglected everything. Right. Else. And you're not eating and you're not exercising, you're gaining weight and 15 years from now, you're going to see the results of that. Um, right. Yeah. So how do you employ the gamification? Because uh, again, we were talking about this. One of the things that I start, I've done, I've started a lot of things in COVID. You know, I did the 12 week year. As soon as we were locked down in March, I said, I'm doing the next 12 weeks will be equivalent to a year in my practice. And I accelerated my practice by a year in 12 weeks. And then I was exhausted because that's a lot of work. <laughs> I didn't want to repeat it over and over and over. Um, but then I was like, okay, so what's another game I could do with myself, you know, with myself. And we were talking about this, you know, that I, when I have my tea in the morning, um, before I can have a sip of my tea, I have to do 15 push-ups on my countertop because I have a rotator cuff issue. So I can't be flat, but you know, I have to do 15, uh, push-ups and now I can have a a sip of tea. And when I come here into my office, I have to do a plank. Um, I have a watch that, you know, my watch is going off every 50, 50 minutes to say, get up, walk around, go outside, you know, realign myself with the earth's, um, megahertz, right? We all we're vibrating mm-hmm. at the same energy. So I go out and take a walk, get into the earth, even if it's freezing or raining or whatever, I get out there and do that. So I've been gamifying sort of everything in, um, in COVID, but, and I don't know how I start, you know, I, I'm not. I wasn't doing what you're doing. I mean, I, you're taking it to another level, but if, uh, you know, if someone's doing this, I mean, they're saying, well, what do I gamify? What are some things that they could gamify? Cause you know, your app isn't quite out yet, but what are some things that they can do to gamify 
to create better habits for themselves? Okay. So sure. So the way I would, I would answer that question is for right now, you want to reduce the friction on, on any new habit you're trying to form and, or any bad habit you're trying to get rid of. Right. So let's say, um, we, you and I mentioned briefly before we started this interview, James clear atomic habits. He has things that he calls like habit stacking. Um, he uses terms with like habit stacking, which, which is kind of a way to reduce the friction by doing two habits kind of at once. And so once one doesn't seem as difficult than the other to, de- to develop. So for instance, I, every single morning, and by the way, you, you were talking about routines, routines is a huge part of all of this. Yeah. Like you just want to like have a routine that you get in the, get in the habit of, right. It's like anything else, a routine, like any other habit. And, and once you get in that habit, like you've got your watch set and use technology to help you. What, yeah. that's another like game of any, anything that you can use to reduce friction, make it fun. And so uh, you get in that routine. So my, my shower in the morning, every, every sh- every time I'm taking a shower, I step in, I immediately go to my stretches. I, I, uh, tore my Achilles, excuse me, my, uh, ACL uh, about a year and a half ago and my meniscus. Um, doctor said it was the worst one he'd ever seen. I really blew it out. And because of that for, for maybe forever, I'll be doing these stretches that I need to do every morning to continue to, to keep it strong and stretch it and make sure it goes back to where it was. I'm still not hundred percent there. Um, but as I'm doing that, I say my morning mantra and I used to just say my morning mantra in the shower without doing that. But now I've, I've actually worked it out to where my stretching and the, the, the mantra is the same time period. So I literally, I'm like doing them on autopilot. I'm not even really thinking. And then it's like, I get out of the shower and I've said my mantra, which is all the things that are most important for me to remember, to continue to build my, my momentum and and do those habits that I'm working on in each of my five cores. And then at the very end, I say what I'm grateful for, which gives me that extra boost to remind me like the 10,000 foot view, like, okay, so something bad happened, who cares? In general, I still am very fortunate. And I come out and I'm like ready to go. I'm like, boom, you know, and then I, yeah. and I go into another routine, which is I floss and I brush and I take my vitamins and I use my moisturizer and, and yeah. these things that, you know, I just become automatic for me. And so by the time I get out of the, you know, I'm, I'm dressed and I'm ready to go. It's, it's, you know, I've already got my, my engines are revved, Yeah, and, you know, versus yeah. take somebody who's got a different type. Don't of talk energy. to me until I have coffee. Don't talk to me until <laughs> Right. And by the way, I, this is all after I've had coffee. So the first thing I do is I go down, I have my, and that's another thing. Yeah. I actually instead of coffee, I think this is gross, but for me, I've gotten used to it and it doesn't bother me at all. I make a shake. And so yeah. I have my protein, spinach, coffee, banana. Me too. I do that too in the morning. Yeah. It's good. And, Cause it, yeah. it's it, it, like, and then that way I'm not drinking two separate things, which takes up too much time. Have my, my sip. And then I go through whatever emails like require my immediate attention while I'm drinking my coffee. And then my brain's pretty much awake. And then I go into that routine. I'll just tell you. Yeah. Yes. And I love what you're doing. And so it's interesting because what you're saying is to create good habits and to eliminate bad habits, they can't be compartmentalized. And, you know, as you're speaking this, I tend to compartmentalize and I, and I'm great with habits. I mean, people ask me all the time, how do you get so much done? And it's because so many things that I do are habits. And when, when you have habits time, it's easier, right? It's faster. I mean, look, women can get ready in 20 minutes if they have to. They have a system, they have a routine, but they always take an hour, right? But if we had to condense the time because we got our little routine, we could get ready very, very quick. And it's the law, the law of, um, it's not polarity, is it polarity? No, Parkinson's law, the Parkinson's law, right? If you have all the time in the world to do something, you'll take all the time in the world to do it. If you condense it, it'd be so much better. So I create a bunch of habits so that things were going to move faster for me. But it's funny that you're saying this because I'm thinking about my day, you know, how I start my day and I, and I haven't put the gamification on steroids yet. And, um, and not even that, but I'm compartmentalizing everything. So for example, when I wake up in the morning, I don't get out of bed until I say all my prayers. Then I get out of bed. Right. And then, you know, and then I, if I'm going to have my tea, which is not a bad habit, but if I'm having my tea, you know, I do my little push ups while it's being made and that kind of thing. But I'm thinking, you know, if I want to do some stretching or, you know, I want to do something a little different. Um, and even drinking my tea is compartmentalized. You said you do it when you're doing your, your emails. Not that I want to do that necessarily, but I'm just saying that. Right. 
I, I get my tea. I do a little, do my little push, did my prayer. Now I can get up, make my tea, do my little push ups. Now I can have my tea, but I compartmentalize it. I sit and I have my tea. Right. And I'm, and I'm doing some positive discussion. You know, I'm just consuming, I'm consuming the things that I love to consume, you know, living on 21 acres and listening to animals in the morning and the birds and the whatever, and I'm just consuming. Right. But I'm not doing anything productive. Well, um, give yourself some credit. Sorry. But I will. You, but I'll give myself some grace. Oh, here, here's here's some credit to you. Yeah. That, and, and this is my point. A lot of people don't even realize they may even. Um, and so first of all, success habits that you have, you want to be aware of and you want to do more of and figure yeah. out how, to, how do I expand that? How do I move that to something else? So number one, I heard you're while you're waiting for your tea to brew, you're doing your push ups. So yeah. that 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 alone, that you could one just works. be sitting there. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. You could just be sitting there, but you, uh, your routine okay. is. I'm waiting for my tea. I'm going to do my yeah. push-ups, right? Yeah. And then, and then your tea's ready. And for you, you said you don't necessarily want to be doing your emails. I don't blame you. For me, it's like that's that's. My but I time. could I'm read. In. I could read more. I mean, I'm a I'm an avid reader, but I could read more while I'm drinking my tea instead of reading later. You know, I can. Come sure, you could. Or I, I also heard that you're you're listening to nature. I don't know if that's why you're having your tea, but if if listening to nature and the birds and enjoying your what you have oh, yeah. and that's yeah, part the grateful cool. part of it yeah that alone is actually that that's a hat that's a good habit stack in itself because yeah. you're you're not just sitting there looking at trump and, and biden news watching that's just TV. making you angry yeah right yeah. you're actually doing yeah. something that's feeding your soul and making yeah. you happier and like and then you yeah. come out of that you're like oh okay, i've had my tea and now you know ah, now i can I attack know. all the other stuff right yeah yeah so give yourself but, some credit but absolutely those yeah. are the types of things to be thinking of in terms yeah. of like you don't want to waste time right Pre right time is is our most precious commodity and it it flies so fast as you and i i'm sure can attest yeah. right yeah blink yeah so you don't want to be eating a cookie and having tea you just or eating a cookie <laughs> right no, but I, it is a ha ha, an aha moment for me because it is, there are times where I think I compartmentalize and I think, you know, instead of laying in bed saying my prayers, I could be doing something. I could be walking on the treadmill because I'll use that as an excuse, you know, that, well, I don't have time to walk on the sure, treadmill. Sure. I could, I could sure. be doing that. And I think that that would create like, okay, if I, if I'm so heck bent on saying my prayers, which I am, and it's a good habit. And the one that's the problem, right, is getting on that crazy thing for 20 minutes. Well, it takes me 20 minutes to say my prayers. Why can't I do both? So it is an one. aha moment for me. And I, you know, and I want to share and, and, and share that vulnerability because someone's listening to this and thinking, no, oh, that's me too. But Jen said it so good. I'm yeah. <laughs> working work on you. this together, right? I, yeah. No, I appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah. There's always opportunities there. And even, even the people that, you know, think that they're, they're killing it. And, and, you know, I call them five percenters versus 95 percenters. It's, it's really more like right. one versus 90, 90. Yeah. And I'm probably a five and a half percent or something, you know, I'm getting there. I'm <laughs> really, really close to that. So I know that you have, you know, your, um, the coaching that you do. So if someone wants to get in touch with you and I don't want to just say, you know, Oh, go to, go to here. Cause I, I know we can, we can just go to your, um, more M O O R E momentum, more momentum. It's not M O R E. Right. Um, or momentum.com and we can get information about touching base with you and having you speak in an event or, you know, and, and listen, I'm telling you, if I were an, and I am an owner of a company, but if I were an owner of a company that had everyone coming into an office and now everyone's sort of scattered around and doing this, I would want you to come to and do a, a Zoominar, right? A Zoominar with us to help everyone create these wonderful, great habits that they're going to bring back to the office if we're going to even open up, right? If we're going right, to have an right. office when it's all said and done, but I would want them you to be speaking at my sales meeting or my rally or something like that. So, um, so whether it's your rally, you know, a conference, or you want to just work with Will and you know personally to overcome these bad habits and say that's it, I've had enough. When this COVID cocoon is done, I have the option to either emerge as a butterfly or I have the option to be all shriveled up and have created all these terrible, terrible bad habits. What is the best way for them to communicate with you? And what, what is it that you're offering to people? So I'm actually not taking on one-on-one uh, -on -one clients right now. And I'm not, I, and I'm actually 
I'm happy to have discussions about speaking engagements. Um, um, but that I'm putting that at two to three months in the future. I've done speaking engagements. I did it at TEDx and um, yeah. I, I absolutely love it. Uh, at, at the same time, kind of going back to what we were saying earlier with, with habits or, or balance, doing one thing at a time. I've kind of got this, I've got my goals laid out very, by the way, goals are one of the most important habits that you can have. Like you've got to review yeah. your goals every morning because it's just that reminder yeah. of this is what I'm working towards. Otherwise, it's I like to call them expectations. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like goals that. are a little dreamy. My goal is to have a million dollars in my bank account, right? My expectation is to have a million dollars in bank account action. That, that's good. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and to me, right. I mean, I won't go into it now, but I have a whole system yeah. to help with that, which is the, the gist is you don't want to just have just one uh, a generic goal. Like I want to have a zillion dollars. It's you yeah. got to be specific. So it's, you have a, an ultimate goal of where you want to end up in life and the types of things, like I said, that funeral is kind of that exercise. And yeah. then it's yeah. um, for, for your finance career and finance. Okay. It's a five year, it's a three year. I actually then break it down into uh, one year, six months, um, yeah, three months short, and then, short term, mid and long. Yeah. And then immediate, like literally yeah. like, what do I need to do today? And that way you see the big picture of like, this is what I want. And, and you don't get caught up in just more and more and more. Like you yeah. have a specific yeah. goal that you're working towards. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love that. So you'll have conversations with people about that. Have you ever thought about doing group coaching? Um, yeah, no, I, I, coaching is something huge. It's, I, I took it off my website right now, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But if you want, if you're interested in, if anybody wants to have me, um, like I can always make time for it. Cause I, yeah. I really, it's one of those things I'm super passionate and love. Uh, and so you could just reach out to me, go to my website and just go to the contact us yeah. page. And, and so you're expressing a habit here, a habit of not letting people take over your priorities. <laughs> that's right that's right because I'm, I'm the type we can all be yes people right oh yeah 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 and then we Got don't it. get anything for ourselves saying no is hard to do especially when you're trying to grow something and like i'm so excited and i just want to help everybody but there's only one yeah. of me and i know what i need to get done and yeah. they're prioritized yeah. and the coaching and this and the speaking is a huge part of it it's one of my pillars i have these five pillars of this plan that i'm developing out revamping the educational system is also another big one we have got to change what we're teaching kids in school in terms of, you know, these things yeah. like we're talking about right now, habits, cores, you know, uh, doing the types of things that are going to really lead to happiness, not just focusing on math, science, you know, algebra. Yeah. It's like, I remember taking trig three AP and it's like, yeah. what did that do for me? Yeah. That did not, you know, other than, you know, yes, there's, yeah. there is value and I don't mean to take that away. And, and no, no, I totally get it. No. And you know what I mean? It's, it's a movement that, um, that Tony Robbins and Dean uh, Graciosi, Graciosi are doing right now, you know, of uh, being a knowledge broker. It's all about knowledge right now. That's, that's why all the, all the podcasts that are out there are really becoming, you know, bigger and bigger and bigger because everyone wants this knowledge and it, you can't always get it behind you know, the desk in a, in a classroom. And we already know that a lot of education is, you know, starting to, well, at least colleges, you know, the enrollments down and it's not to shake that because, you know, I went to college too, but it's, um, it's that we just need to apply all this stuff that we're learning in a way that makes us better human beings. We have so much potential. That's exactly right. There. And so, yeah, right. And so as, as I said, you know, I've got now these, these two small children, I got two boys, one's, one's 18 months, one's four and a half, Aww. you know, the thought of them when they get to young adulthood, where I was in college, as I described it, the, the, yeah. the start of this broadcast, when my, my rock bottom and, and just the confusion and, and wishing I had had all this knowledge early on. So my whole thing is I want to get it as early on as possible. Cause remember those habits, they dig in deep and they're hard to unclench, but once yeah. you do, then it's easy. So, but why not? The earlier you start, the better you, the chances you yeah. have of, of getting those right ones set up to begin with. And then yeah. you know, you're off to the races from an early age. Yeah. And change, change patterns that happened in the past, you know, like the past, I mean, that's what my husband and I wanted the whole time that, you know, we've been married for 37 years now. And, you know, we, um, we wanted to change the patterns that we had, you know, that were given to us. <laughs> right dna right. to us or or not i mean just circumstances that were given to us and it's um you know important to do that and i feel like we've done that 
I feel very strong that we've done that. So, well, yeah, it's, it's been an absolute good. pleasure meeting with you again, Will, and taking so much time. I appreciate you taking a little more time than we normally do on a podcast, but I think that this is a, a hot topic right now. This is a topic that, you know, we're sitting around. We might as well do something with the time, right? We, we might as well create good habits so that yes. we can better people on the, you know, on the other side of this. And, um, you know, so I really appreciate all the wisdom that you've given us today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jen. This has been great. And yeah, just to, just to piggyback on what you just said, we kind of started at the beginning about this. Like, this is an opportunity right now. And, you know, you, you, you're not because you're getting out of your normal routine, right? Whether it's going to work or whatever it is. And now all of a sudden you're kind of like things are different. And it's like this sort of like chance to sort of say, OK, let's take a good hard look at what's going on in my life. What's not working? What's working? Where do I want to be? And start intentionally setting some of these habits. And remember, start small. You try to go too big. And yeah. 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 I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for those, those words at the very end here. I really appreciate it. So again, if you want to connect with Will, just go to more M O O R E momentum.com. And we'll have the, we'll have the link in the notes as well. Um, so that you can connect with him and learn more about this. And again, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and for those that are listening, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to listen to something that hopefully will propel you into further greatness in your life. Um, as he's doing with his rockets and his aliens and his gamification. And we can't wait to, till the app comes out. And because podcasts are so forever, right? They're just forever out there. I can't wait to go back in and change up the episode and be sure to put that link in there for the app. So if you're listening to this, you know, another year from now or so, go back in there and um, yes. well, there is a pre sign up. I should have said, sorry to interrupt you. Um, yeah. if you go on the yeah. website, you, you th there's a, you go to the gamification tab. And you can sign up to get a uh, notice when the app comes oh, out. Oh, when it comes out. Awesome. Yay. I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go do that right away. Well, thank you again for listening. And please uh, give us a great rating. Write a review for us. We love hearing all of all of that information. If you know someone that's had you know, a great change in their life and now they're doing good in the world, please let me know. I'd love to have that opportunity to interview them as well. So we'll catch you next time. You've been listening to Success to Significance with Jen Duplessis, the number one podcast for people wanting to give more value and make an impact. Loved this episode? Be sure to subscribe right now at www.jenduplessis.com slash S2S for more stories, strategies, and thoughts to help you gain significance and success. And if you like what we're doing, don't forget to give us a rating and review so we can continue to bring you the best content possible. Join us next week for another breakthrough episode. Thank you for listening.